Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> yeah, still got this on because, well, stuff's still going on. <laughs> and again, I actually have, you know, some caring and compassion for people other than myself. So, anyway, this is one of the sort of related videos that I wanted to put up. The other one is currently putting the finishing touches on that one. But, uh, this is going to be an addendum to the last sword review that I did, namely the one on um, the Double Dragon Sway Dynasty doll. Now, you may remember the last video that I did. I basically, you know, reviewed two doll from LK Chen Swords, and I pretty much liked both of them. The problem I encountered, however, was that when it came time to reviewing the Sway Dynasty doll, I mean, it was great, the balance was nice, it was constructed pretty well, you know, despite the fact that, you know, the people who handled it kind of beat the crap out of it. But the main problem was that the sword was dull. Apparently I had gotten my hands on someone else's order who wanted one for practice, and I ended up with theirs, and I guess they ended up with mine. Some people have been asking me how that got resolved, or that person ever got, you know, their dull one or whatever. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> You know, I don't work for the company, I, I, and I never bothered to ask, but I'm assuming that, you know, things are straightened out. The customer service for these guys seems to be really, really good, so. But anyway, yeah, I, I still liked the sword, and I just basically said that, you know, I wasn't able to do much cutting footage. I mean, I was able to cut one bottle with it, which, again, is a testament to how good the steel is, because, again, that sword was dull. Well, LKHN was not happy about that, so a few days ago... <sighs> this showed up at my door. Yeah. <laughs> they sent me another one. I didn't ask for it. <laughs> I'm not saying that as a, I didn't ask for this. No, I, I, you know, I wasn't like, so you need to send me another. I was just like, you know, this is a good sword. I'm pretty sure that, you know, with the edge. And besides, LK Chen swords, they, they tend to sharpen the hell out of their blades. Like, these are some of the sharpest swords I've encountered, as far as, you know, as Chinese weaponry is concerned. That white arc in particular, oh my god, that thing slices through things like they're not even there. So I, you know, and also we, you saw how the cavalry dial worked. That one had a really good edge too. That one also just cut through objects like, you know, like it's, it was his only job. So I figured it was going to be the same with this. But they were like, nah, 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 no assuming here we're going to actually have the proper thing in action. So, here we are. So, this video is mostly going to be focusing on the cutting ability, and I do have footage of that, and you will be seeing it shortly. However, there are a few subtle differences with this one that I feel are worth mentioning. Now, as far as the basic stats go, those are pretty much the same. Uh, point of balance, the weight, uh, you know, the fittings, they're pretty much the same, so I don't really need to bring those up again. However, there are a few things that are worth mentioning. One, we can finally take a really good look at the scabbard and appreciate just, you know, how beautiful the wood looks, you know, because they didn't have an elephant sit on this as it came over to me. And again, when I mean they, I mean, you know, the people who shipped it over. I do not blame LKHN for the last scabbard being cracked. But, um good hard wood for the scabbard i see no cracks no splits the same type of really good construction that they've been putting into their weapons lately it seems that they've really been taking earlier criticisms about quality control to heart because the latest pieces i've been getting from them even the twiddle other than the fact that the scabbard was cracked everything was in order fittings are still nice and tight nothing sliding i think they're using better glue now too so Good on them, once again, for that. Still a really beautiful detail on, you know, the fittings themselves. Like, you can see, you know, the ring pommel here with the two dragons facing each other. I hope you guys can see the detail on that. Looks really good. Handguard, as simplistic as it is, still has a nice, elegant look to it. But you guys may have noticed something. Note the color tone. Look, Note the change. The last one which is over here. Yeah. This is the one that they sent me before. 
And as you can see, they're pretty much identical, except this one. It looks like all the materials, all the fittings, both on the scabbard and on the sword itself, pretty much looks like the same um, brass material or bronze material. I think they're using bronze. Um, bleh. Sorry about that. This, on the other hand, it's a darker material. And I want to ask, I should have asked this beforehand, and I'll probably update the information, you know, underneath the video once I know for sure. I don't know why I didn't ask. But it almost looks like this is like a copper, doesn't it? So you got this two-tone effect with the fittings. You got the brass from, you know, here, you know, the collar there, this part, this part. And then you got the pommel and the handguard, which is more of a coppery color. So it makes me wonder if this is copper or copper plated, or if they just simply went with a darker color, you know, brass or bronze for this. Blade itself, well, like I said, same weight, same point of balance, same beautiful feel to the sword. Like this thing is, yeah, this thing just wants to move. It is pretty light, but still with enough presence in the blade to let you know that any cuts you do with this will be authoritative. This thing is paper cutting sharp oh boy it is there's still some you know beautiful patterns on the blade all their blades have you know this really nice you know steel patterns in there all you know the, the patterns you tend to see unfolding steel all there all you know pops right out at you so yeah still a really beautiful sword still feels great in the hand even these things here when i was cutting with this they didn't dig into my palms or anything like that so which was a worry of mine but i guess you know the them being more flush against the handle you know helps with the comfort i no pretty much it just folds in i was about to say that i would like it if it came that way you know before you got your hands in it because when i first received this it stuck out a bit more these things but as i used it you know they conformed more to the shape of the handguard and Again, I didn't feel any discomfort while using this. It didn't get in the way. Now, granted, this, again, is the one with the longer handle. The ones with the shorter handle, I couldn't tell you if, you know, how much this gets in the way of your grip. But I would like to think that it probably would be more of a problem. So, yeah, I, if, honestly, if you were going to be going for this blade, I would suggest getting the one with the longer handle, especially if you got bigger hands. But that's just me. But enough of my yapping. You guys want to see how well this thing performs, so let's go see how well it performs. So, here we are, going through the cutting footage for this weapon. As you can see, I'm just testing it out. As you can see, it's pretty easy to maneuver. It's, again, pretty light in the hand. Though, of course, you know, that really beautiful tassel there might get in your way if you don't know how to handle it. So right away, as you can see, it's, you know, cuts really well. It went through that bottle pretty easily. And that is one of the hard shells. <laughs> That's me already like showing, you know, that I'm pretty impressed with it, which I was. There I was doing a bit of, you know, a typical dowel wrapping motion, which I'm not that great at. But yeah, it cut through just fine. Um, if you are better at using a dowel and you know how to like do those type of techniques, you shouldn't really have a problem using that here, especially with your, your practice. There, once again, I pull it off there. <laughs> bit of the wrapper got caught on the blade a bit i could have i guess cut it a little bit better but again went through the edges were not ragged went through pretty well now this is one of the harder targets one of those hard arizona bottles and there i keep i'm keeping that in because i did a very slow not that strong a cut and as you saw there it, it still cut deeply in there's a rising cut on that bottle and yeah was able to go through pretty quickly um i have to say that you know because despite how light the weapon was i thought that it was going to be a little hard to you know go through targets like i would have to put a little extra effort and i was also wondering about the blade geometry you know the kind of like the fact that the edge part of the blade um and that second cut there was i barely tapped it and it went through um i thought the edge geometry of this blade was going to kind of mess me up a bit but no no this, even though it's very similar to the Tang Dao that I worked with years ago, nah, this, this cuts through with very little problem. I'm, like, I'm not struggling to get this to work. Or maybe I'm just used to this by now. Maybe that's what's going on, but yeah, it slices through. 
Again, I will apologize for people who would rather I'm doing this with a tatami mat, but... And that, by the way, was a fairly empty bottle that I did that with. Like, it was already cut. But, yeah, still went through. So, there you go. But yeah, for those who, you know, are upset I didn't have a tatami mat, so those things are kind of expensive, and water bottles are easy for me to get, so there you go. So, yeah, all in all, I'm impressed with this cutting footage. I think that somebody else who wanted to work with this to cut with, they should be happy with this too, so... Yeah, it double dragon's way out. It cuts well. So yeah, this is another good one. Cuts through objects pretty well. I use a lot of hard shell bottles with this one just to really get a feel for how well it's going to be able to cut through tougher targets. I'm quite confident that this will go through tatami mats pretty easily, especially if you have the skill to do it. So all in all another really great piece if you are interested in a straight bladed doll that has a really good edge and has a blade that can handle the rigors of cutting i don't think you could do wrong with this one personally i really think a sword like this would benefit not only you know somebody who wants to collect you know uh, your should i say non-standard sword like if you wanted something that was a little bit more unique a little bit more, I guess, exotic, so to speak. You know, you know that word is, tends to be overused. You would, de I, I would recommend something like this. Uh, if you happen to be a Chinese-style martial artist who wants to kind of practice, I guess, your Dao and Zen techniques at the same time, this will do you. Uh, and yes, there are... This is not um, something crazy that I just suggested. There has been, throughout history, times when the techniques have crossed over and they've developed weapons to do that. This will certainly, you know, work for you. It's light enough and well-balanced enough for the more dexterous motions of a Dian, but still has enough authoritative cutting power to use it like a doll. It is single-edged. You'll be able to do the head wraps and all that type of stuff. Yeah, I, I really think this would benefit somebody who's interested in kind of combining their techniques, so to speak, or, you know, want to practice both techniques with just a single weapon. And not to mention, it looks cool, so... Yeah, another really good piece. They knocked it out the park again, in my personal opinion. And it looks like they're going to be doing it again because they've told me that they're working on other we weapons. Other weapons based on certain time periods. <sighs> At least we have that to look forward to in 2020, right? Considering all the other things that have been happening, it, some good news is welcome. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys got something good out of this. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, I got some other stuff planned that should be popping up soon. So till then, catch you guys later. Blade itself.